the result they're one and one Digger Phelps our analyst and commentator incidentally we'll go back to cycling for that gold medal run in just a little while but today we get a chance to see the beginning of a basketball game that we think could be very entertaining but Digger there's a change in the U.S. starting lineup the reason Steve Alford will start today is because coach Knight does not want to have the same backcourt as far as weaknesses and defenses so when you take a look at Alfred coming off the bench, now he can bring in Fleming and Robertson versus playing them both together who are their best defensive guard of Fleming and Robertson. Do you think that uh, Bobby Knight's going to send his team out and really try to blitz Uruguay? And Uruguay has been a team that has started slowly. This is what's happened so far. The intimidation of the front line, the strength on the boards has really helped the United States play better defense, Keith. But I think Uruguay, they'll try to force them to play the physical game. They committed 46 fouls both teams last night. Uruguay playing against Spain so I think you're going to see that, that same type of aggressive type of physical play to try to upset the U.S. composure. And we might also note that Yugoslavia won its game just a little while ago rather handily defeating Egypt 100 to 69 and Milko Novosel the Yugoslav coach is sitting right behind us so he's not going to miss a minute I don't think of this ball game because he figures he's got a very good chance to meet the United States in that gold medal game. Yugoslavia of course the defending champions and as a matter of fact they took the silver medal in Montreal and they dominated Soviet basketball teams through most of the 70s and early 80s. The tip goes to Uruguay and the first shot of the ball game by Luis is blocked by Patrick Ewing. This is the intimidation you're talking about when that gets going for Ewing that makes the defense that much tougher. Uruguay very quickly moving the ball around and they're a quick team and it looks like they've come out to play basketball today and not argue. It is Sam Perkins and Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing on the front line with Vern Fleming and Steve Alford the guards Michael Jordan playing a wing position inside Perkins falls down but Alford holds it in front and now Sam's wide open. Boom. Perkins just uh, led it with a block defensively. Today he comes back with a big jump shot, and that's what makes Sam the best player, I think, for getting this team into a game plan. I've said it before. He is a quiet man, but when the game is done, you look at the key plays, and you almost always find Perkins' name. Whistle, and we've got a foul called on Steve Alford. The officials today are Petrovic from Yugoslavia, Felipe from the Philippines. There's Bob Knight, the head coach, the head coach of the... Uruguayan team is Ramon Achimende. The baseline ball fake inside, that's where he got in foul trouble. Alfred trying to go for the block rather than waiting on the floor, waiting for the player to come down to score, and this is where the foul came in. Eber Nunez is on the free throw line for Uruguay. He starts on the front line along with Horacio Lopez, Wilfredo Ruiz, Carlos Peinada is in the backcourt, and Luis La Rosa at 6'8 on the front line. Nunez gets the third shot now. You get three to make two in international basketball. Nunez shooting 86% from the foul line. Misses two out of the three. The rebound comes off and Uruguay comes up with it. And we've got a second whistle against the American team. This is Vern Fleming called for the foul. That was by the Yugoslavian official. This is going to be interesting to see how they interpret the international rules. All out-of-bounds plays, Keith, on a foul will be side out-of-bounds. There is no underneath out-of-bounds on your basket. Pinata from the corner and a whistle and a foul on Sam Perkins. That call by Felipe of the Philippines. And to say this in behalf of the official, he made a good call because Sam put his hand in the small of his back and plunked him in the cheap seats. Pinata out in front. Inside it goes to Lopez. Good player. And a whistle call. and a three-second call against Uruguay. Now, you don't have to have the official touch the ball. International basketball, just grab it and go. This is what the United States is doing with Alfred. You had a look at Ramon Echemende, the coach, and he is flamboyant, to say the least. And it looks to me like, Digger, these two officials are going to call it tight in the early going, at least. That's a shame, Keith, because what you have to do in the first few minutes of a ball game is let these teams get loose, let them play, let the muscles get in shape, and let's play the game of basketball, and it shouldn't become a foul shooting contest. The officiating has not been consistent. There have been a couple of instances where the language barrier has become involved in some decisions as well. Patrick Ewing of Georgetown played for John Thompson. He goes back for his senior year at Georgetown next year to finish up his degree work. And Patrick has it flip away. No good. Uruguay fouls last night 
They had 33 personals and three technicals called against them in their loss to Spain. In the first half alone, they had 22 fouls. What the United States will try to do is play real pressure basketball on the ball pressure, which we call ball side anytime on the floor, and weak sides, any side of the basket opposite the ball where you can help out to the ball. And this is what they try to do, front of the, to the baseline. Carlos Pinata, 6'1", 180-pounder. Gives the ball in the corner to Lopez. Hooks it back out in front to Ruiz. It's going to be short, and it's taken out of there by Steve Alford. Fleming goes to the right corner. Perkins to the left corner. Inside on the baseline, Ewing. They look to Michael Jordan. He's got a little room. He gets a push, and he'll go to the free throw line three to make two. Again, Keith, what made this play happen was the way they came down the floor in a set. With Alfred handling the ball, you got a good pass inside by Fleming. Michael Jordan's very good going in the air, turning, not just drawing the foul, but this is usually a three-point play for him, but he got pushed on the shot. Michael shooting 80%, four out of five from the free throw line. Nunez the foul. He's fouled out of both the previous games for the Uruguayan team. Bob Knight, the head coach for the United States, George Raveling of Iowa, and Don Donaher of Dayton. Assisting him and C.M. Newton of Vanderbilt is the team manager and the busiest man in town. Michael Jordan will probably go down as one of the best ever to play in Olympic competition. I don't think there's any question about it. You want to hear this crowd ooh and all, just wait till he gets flying around, and he literally flies around. A five to one ball game, the USA in front. Ewing almost knocks it loose. Lopez forces the shot up, a whistle, and a foul called against Jordan. Well, at least they're spreading the fouls around. Well, he comes inside, makes a pretty good defensive move, but he reaches in with the hand and now gets a piece of the ball. Now, that, to me, that's a blind position call right there. I don't think any time you hit the ball on the hand with the ball, it's usually not a foul. I got a story about this referee, I got to tell you. He was our host in 1979 over in Yugoslavia, and we used to call him Casper because we never saw him, Keith. <laughs> I've known some of those. 74% shooter Lopez is from the free throw line. 5-2, U.S. leads. One the more. Bonus. The bonus shot now, three for two. I doubt very much of Uruguay will you go to a pressing defense. Surprisingly, they're playing man-to-man, -man, and I think that's where you get in trouble playing against the United States. Comes off, Ewing snatches it out of the air, and uh, they're going to call a lane violation. That's, that's right. Uh, this if is, the shot had been good, it would not have applied. I think Coach Knight has every reason to be upset. They're calling things that you just don't call, and it's just taken away from the game. Well, they're not consistent. It varies from game to game, because it varies from country to country as to the kind of officials you're getting. It's 19 feet plus in that restricted area along the baseline, and that extra footage there makes quite a bit of difference. Actually, the second man along the lane's got the best shot at getting a rebound off the ball. Ewing is inside. A snap pass from Jordan. and went right through Patrick's hands. He had a gimme. And he went right through his hands. Very good pass. Michael Jordan sees the play very well. The, I, I just don't think Ewing knew it was there. Patrick knocks it out of bounds. A little hot after having made the mistake. So the ball is slapped out of bounds with the U.S. leading 5-3 come back to the forum continuing our coverage of the third game for the U.S. men's basketball team they now lead Uruguay nine to three one of those baskets including a thundering dunk by Patrick Ewing pass inside to Sam Perkins and Perkins is whistled for a foul called him for elbowing watch this dunk as Jordan gives it to Ewing, he takes off from outside the restricted area and bango. That electrifies the crowd, Keith. There's nothing like that type of play in basketball. But at the other end of the floor, Patrick Ewing is playing the best defense I've ever seen him play. He's playing aggressive. He's causing turnovers. He's blocking shots. And at the same time, he's getting the rebound play to get the transition break going. Well, he also got his shirt tail chewed pretty well, too, yesterday after being taken out of the game because Bob Knight didn't think he was asserting himself, making his presence felt enough in the inner defenses. Perkins now with two personal fouls. And Luis Pieri is in the ball game. That shot is blocked by Patrick Ewing. Lopez gets it back, won't go down. Got two rebounds off the offensive board, and Ruiz is fouled by Fleming. All right, here's what happens, Keith. Coach Knight likes to have this team play real pressure ball, chase it to the sideline. You see the rotation, which comes from the weak side. That's the side opposite the ball. And when you rotate off, there is no help you see getting the rebound and this is where the offensive player got the ball inside for the foul situation and this is why we have the foul shot right now Ruiz is 10 for 10 from the free throw line this being the third game for Uruguay as it is for the United States 
Rui's a very smart player inside. And we got that offensive rebound. He just threw a little ball fake and drew the foul. So your score is now nine to five. U.S. by four. And we have 1550 to play in the first half. Vern Fleming takes it to the basket. Won't go down. Rebound is pulled out of there by La Rosa for Uruguay. And Pineda brings it up. In the corner, Ruiz. Good. He's a good shooter from that angle. He had the open shot, and that's what Canada did not do yesterday. And I think you'll see more of this happening as we go through the rest of the competition in the Olympics. That dribble penetration, hit the corner, jump shot to beat the United States. Inside, Jordan. He's just all world, Keith. Chicago well, Bulls hangs, will love him, huh? He hangs up there for so long, the average man goes up, comes down, and then spectates while Michael shoots. <laughs> this is Lopez. He's got it. Same theory. Dribble penetration one side. You get the ball back to the weak side. You got the opposite side jump shot. And this is what they'll try to do to the United States. And Uruguay trails by just two. And they have come out playing basketball today. And off the bench now, Alvin Robertson and Leon Woods. You're going to get a change at the guard positions. Rebound is out of there by Pierre. And a whistle. Why you're seeing Wood come in and Alfred coming out. They're the same offensively. Wood is learning to play better defense. Alfred is not known for his defense. Of course, when you bring Robinson in and you take Fleming out, you got the same type of defensive player. They cannot come in, however, under international rules until the U.S. has possession of the ball. Lopez forces the shot, bad shot, and it's taken down by Patrick Ewing. Little trap now in backcourt, but then Uruguay relaxes and comes on back to set up. Inside Perkins. And you... You're not going to, no way Pierre is going to handle Sam Perkins. Sam can score 60 in, in, if, if they persist in that kind of uh, defense. Perkins has really developed that little turnaround jump hook shot, which is probably the toughest shot to guard against in basketball. 13 to 9. Chris Mullen has joined uh, Leon Wood and Alvin Robertson to come into the ball game, and now they can substitute on the turnover. And that means Vern Fleming will be leaving. And we'll be back in just a moment. A privately owned facility. It is the home of the Los Angeles Lakers of the NBA and the Los Angeles Kings of the NHL. And inside, the U.S. men's basketball team leading Uruguay by a score of 15 to 9. Alvin Robertson now of Arkansas now in the game. Just picked up his first personal foul. Good feed pass. And then he is hammered by Sam Perkins, and that is foul number three by Sam. Uruguay has scouted the United States pretty well. When you get the weak side rebounding situation, you give a ball fake. The United States likes to block the shots, and that's where Perkins got in trouble, and now we got Tisdale coming in for Sam Perkins. Wayman Tisdale from Oklahoma replaces Sam Perkins of North Carolina. So your lineup includes Leon Wood, Cal State Fullerton, Alvin Robertson of Arkansas, Chris Mullen of St. John's, and Patrick Ewing of Georgetown stays in, and on the line, it is Luis Pieri. I would probably say after rest, Patrick Ewing's going to probably come out in a little while, and, and you might see either Concac come in or Michael Jordan move to the small forward again and force Tisdale to play as the center. You've got four fresh players in now for the United States, and the score is uh, 15 to 10. This is the strength of the United States, Keith. It's bench. They just really play well together. They're catching on to the Indiana system, which Coach Knight has instilled in this team. He's got the talent. With his system, they're going to be tough to beat all the way through. Leon Wood out of the PCAA with Cal State Fullerton is a man that will push it up court in a hurry. And he is particularly effective against zones. Inside, Ewing, and he missed it! He went for the slam, and he missed it. Well, when you hang on the rim, it's technical a technical, foul. even in international basketball. What happens is he loses his balance. He makes the catch, but he bobbles his balance right here and comes down, and he's afraid of getting hit. So he grabs the rim, and they call a tee. He was worried about an injury versus making the two points. And they do not have the breakaway rims on these backboards now because the FIBA rules have not been changed to allow for the breakaway rims. So they're using the old solid steel rim. And I'll tell you, when Ewing got up there, all seven feet of him rattling around on that backboard, it really it wiggled. Keith, if that was in Yugoslavia, the glass would have shattered. I've seen that happen so. about three or four times over there, including the NIT tour this spring that went over. Two rims shattered. Well, the Yuga, the uh, Uruguayans get two points out of it. It's 15-12 ball game now as Pineda makes the two free throws and Leon Wood brings it up. He goes to Chris Mullen. Mullen's got room on the baseline. Reverse is good. 
No weak side help by Uruguay. Chris just took the ball in, and Mullins very good going up strong and made two big points in a key situation, Keith. The area now is handling the ball out in, in midcourt with Tisdale checking uh, La Rosa. And Chris Mullen now handling uh, Lopez, and Uruguay throws it away. Good pressure on the ball, good pressure on a passing lane, led to a turnover and a transition right here. Wood to Tisdale. And Wood trying to come back to, uh, Tisdale trying to come back to Wood, and a steal by Mullen. And Chris is fouled by Panada. It's a good foul. What it does, it takes away the fast break. And when you do that in a situation, when you're not in a bonus, it, it saves you two points. Now you can adjust your defense. Now watch the steal by Chris. Makes a great move coming down the floor. Gets hit because it's a four-on-one, and that's the only type of play to make defensively by Uruguay. Mullins open. Now he's shut down by Lopez. Go inside to Tisdale, and Wayman throws it in. And Wayman, more than anybody else on the U.S. team, I think, hurt by the wider restricted area in a free-throw lane, 19 feet. Took away his low post. And a block and a foul. I got to see this. This is a mystery call. This is Casper again. I can't believe this guy. Great block in here by Ewing. The foul had to be after the shot. Fouls on Alvin Robertson. The foul's after the shot. There's there's no foul there. The, sh the shot was blocked. His hand was coming down. Robinson hit him after. I don't know where they even get the bonus out of this. It should be a, should be a side out of bounds play, and, and uh, Bobby Knight should be upset in that call. Names are Petrovic and Felipe. Yugoslavia and the Philippines. Philippines, uh, they don't see this kind of basketball very much because these officials do travel around the world, don't they? Well, the international referees have to in the World Cup as well as any type of international competition they're there. I suppose uh, the reputation of the uh, Uruguayan team because of the uh, fist fight they had in the French game uh, that they won and then all of that ruckus last night against Spain, uh, they probably came out here bound and determined to keep it under control. Shot by Chris Mullen is good. 21-14, seven-point lead, and Chris now with four points. Wood on Panada. Robertson's working on Ruiz. If you can control Ruiz out of the corner, you've got a pretty good hand, and it's a steal by Robertson. Huh. And you get a very, very late whistle. Keithy was out of position. He's guessing because the kid hesitated from Uruguay to go after the ball. Wood just picked it up. Robinson was going down. Robinson makes a great steal right here. Now the ball hit the line. He called it. See, that's why he saw the position. It was the right call. Just didn't like his angle of making that call. Well, the uh, official from the Philippines uh, was not in position. You got Bob Knight now. He's come down for a little visit with the gentleman from the Philippines, Mr. Felipe. If anything, it should you know, be Uruguay's ball if they call it on the line when Robinson knocked it out of his hand. You would certainly think so. Why would it not be? <laughs> That's Casper. Far be it. There's a foul. It's on Penata. He's the point guard for Uruguay, and that gets Coach Echemendi up. I'm not sure, but what we don't have, two of the most volatile coaches in the world on the sidelines tonight. Echemendi of, uh, of Uruguay is... He, uh, he gets so involved and becomes so furious at times uh, that he, it, you can't help but laugh at him. Keith, he's been quiet today. I think Etchemendi tired out last night in the game <laughs> yeah, against I think he did too. Leon Wood misses off the rim, and Patrick Ewing soaring up for the rebound, and you've got a foul called on somebody. This is the intimidation of having Ewing in this game right now, and I think playing him now gives him that game experience that he needs. There were reports about him being hurt earlier, and we saw him play against China for 12 minutes and score 13 points, and now he's in here playing with the, the intensity that you think he can play with. That foul was on Nunez, Hebert Nunez. This is Wayman Tisdale. A lot of beef, huh? Billy Todd boy from Oklahoma. What a nice young man he is. So much fun to be around. And a whistle and a call on Leon Wood for a foul, and that gets Bob Knight up again. Well, it's a hand check, and you've got to call that, and they will in international basketball. And here he comes down the floor. Watch the bump right here. And that's a hand check, and they'll call that. What you can't do is put yourself in situations where you're going to give them the bonus two shots. And this is where I think the United States, as we saw yesterday against Canada, they missed about eight foul shots in the first half. They had them for the game, but they just put, put, didn't put the ball in the hole. That is also uh, nine team fouls now. So from here on, every foul will be... 
two shots unless it is a shooting foul, which will be three to make two. And this is what I think Uruguay will do, as we saw right here right now. Pinote just made the move to the basket that caused the foul, and this is the easiest way to score points against the United States is on a foul line. 23-16, seven-point lead. Leon Wood brings it up. Alford is back in the game at a guard spot, has the ball. He plays almost more like a small forward. Ewing for a dunk. No, no trouble there grabbing the rim, huh, Keith? That's nope. intimidation. Ewing's at his best. That's his game, and this is what's going to make this U.S. team tough to beat, in my opinion. Patrick now with four from the field and three off the foul line for a total of seven. Tisdale checking Nunez. That's Lopez losing his balance, and they call him for traveling. We got a sub. This Gonna is not play action right now. Wood coming uh, to the sidelines, and Michael Jordan will be coming back into the game. Pass to Alfred, who finds Patrick inside. Ewing just goes up with authority and just slams it right through. And that, if that doesn't bother you in a game like this, and this is where you're coming by right now, has got to make a move. They're going to get intimidated. So Patrick Ewing now has gone out of the ball game. Michael Jordan has come back into the ball game with 11 minutes to play in the first half. It's 25-16 USA back. All right, Jim, we're back at the forum with that score. 33-16, the USA has had a run of eight unanswered points, and they lead now by that comfortable margin of 17. And since Wayman Tisdale came into the game, with this combination of players, they're just absolutely taking control of it. Michael Jordan slamming it home. But what has led to this spurt right now is the defense. Great ball pressure. They're not allowing Uruguay to pass anybody once they get over half court. And, and if you can't pass, you got to keep your dribble, which forces the drive. And with the shot, they're not getting offensive rebounding situations. The U.S. is dominating the boards, and they're getting the transition game going. Chris Mullen blocked the shot from the back. Michael Jordan comes out of the pack with it. It's five against three. And inside, it's Tisdale foul. Three seconds it is. Well, what happens in that three seconds? They call it quick in international basketball. We're used to it. a delay count. We got to get something going with a timeout right now on the sidelines with Uruguay. Bobby Knight wants to check his watch. Eight minutes and 34 seconds to play. You've got a timeout called, and it looks like it's charged to Uruguay. What is really interesting, Keith, about this competition right now with the United States? A lot of people were talking about the uh, NBA exhibition games. Well, this is where this has helped out. The bumping and the playing the larger people. Well, I'm playing against an Isaiah. We'll be back with more in a moment. He goes for the offensive rebound. It's missed shot. He gets position. He just comes over to back. The ball came out hard. And that's the hard rim versus the breakaway rim. And Wayman just has to move out another yard. And he'll get that rebound. Big fella is from Tulsa, Oklahoma. His dad is a minister. Plays the guitar. Left-handed. And well. Luis Perry on the line. Lopez Both teams are in the penalty now and the bonus. Excuse me. Lopez and Ruiz have been quiet. You know, they've got about 100 points in two games, and they just can't get on track today because of this pressure defense by the United States. Comes off. Missed them both. And Chris Mullen brings it up to Steve Alford, who will be a sophomore at Indiana next year. Mullen open. Everybody. That screen he set. Now, you're not going to get by that screen. The no. guy weighs 230 pounds, and, and Chris Mullen just made the move to get open, made the shot. How many St. John's followers have seen that play? Michael Jordan with a steal. Here he comes. Three on one. Jordan dunks. You know, Chris, everybody was talking about the United States playing the NBA team. Well, when you go up against an Isaiah, a Magic, and a, a Larry Bird, you're not going to face that in international competition. That is what has helped the United States team play so well defensively in these games. They're beginning to pull away, leading by 23 points. Leon Wood now in the third game has just picked up his 20th assist in these Olympic Games, and this is Jordan. Ahead to Wood. Back to Jordan. You can't believe it. I mean, that... This is it. This is the show you're waiting for. This gets the crowd going. And this is what's going to intimidate the other national teams that are watching this game today. Mirko Novosel still here? Yeah, he's still here. Has a very slight smile on his face that might be construed as a stomachache. 41 to 18. Well, he's a very, very good coach. Bobby's upset because he just wants the perfection. He's a perfectionist, and he's going to strive for it no matter what the score is. He's going to be on his people to play better. And they're, they're not bad. I'll tell you right now. They're big. They're clever. They're strong. They've got wisdom from years of international play. The shot rimming out of there. 41-18 U.S. lead. 
What Bobby would really like to see is a shutout on defense. No points. I'm sure that's true. I feel like you making all those birdie putts. <laughs> sure. Foul whistled on Steve Alford or Leon Wood. You can take your choice on that one. And going to the free throw line will be Horacio Perdomo. He's replaced Pinata at the point guard position. And now Jeff Turner of Vanderbilt comes in. He was coached for the team manager for the USCM Newton. 6-8 from Vandy and Chris Mullen goes out. Very, very solid team defense. Great intensity right now. They're controlling the game in Uruguay. They just can't make the shots when they have to, and it's a psyched out on the foul line. And this is where they got to score their points if they're going to stay in this game is on the foul line because the USA is now in the bonus situation. Alford picks out the long rebound and breaks out of the pack with the pressure behind him. Gives it to Jordan, <laughs> and Michael's got to bring it back out in front to Wayman. Can you believe him? Well, he just got sealed off in there, and rather than throw up a bad shot, and now it is kicked away and out of bounds, and it should be U.S. ball. And here comes Joe Klein into the ball game. And uh, Wayman Tisdale goes out. Joe Klein is a big center from Arkansas. Played for Eddie Sutton. We'll have more in a moment. Her compulsory floor routine. Everyone but the judges felt she deserved a perfect 10. She received a 9-9-5. Fouls in this first half. They can afford to commit fouls of that number because of the great depth. Now watch this kind of play as Alvin Robertson steps into a passing lane, but that was available to him because of the intimidation the three previous trips down the court. What they're doing is faking traps and dropping back and getting in the passing lane, and that's how Robertson stole that one. That's You, you teach that, that's a clinic right there defensively. Well, here's a steal by Uruguay's Nunez, and he misses the layup. The ball is loose, picked up by Panada out of the corner. That's the hard way to get the two points. It's amazing Panada made that because he's so tired from going against his pressure defense, I didn't think he could make any shots the rest of this game. You've got 40 seconds to play in the first half, 57-33, the United States leading Keith Jackson along with Digger Phelps. And this is Jeff Turner out of the corner. High rebound comes to Nunez. Lead pass to Lopez, and it's a gimme. There's, two, there's four points right there that shouldn't happen. Two where you come down here and turn the ball over because Robinson picked up his dribble too soon. That led to two, and now you get somebody who doesn't get back on defense. They get a quick score, which is the international game. 14 seconds to play in the first half. Here is another reason. There's, there's a foul on Ruiz. Here's another reason why the United States has jumped out to the big lead. Bench scoring. Players coming off the bench for the USA have produced 30 points. Uruguay's bench, one. Point. We get time, Keith. Someday we'll talk about this bench in the United States, and we'll talk about the rest of the talent in this tournament, and I'll give you my opinion of what I think could play for the United States. Alvin Robertson of Arkansas at the free throw line, 57-35, 22-point lead now. But if you know, Keith, if you had to pick 10 players from watching them all as we have watched them play, there's only two that I think could possibly make this American team. Shrump from West Germany, as well as Drazen Petrovic from Yugoslavia. Shot put up is short off the front rim. And you've got a whistle and a foul, and Nunez is down and holding his back and hurt, and Joe Klein has been called for the foul. Joe Klein takes up a lot of room, and when Big Joe is traveling at full speed and you have the audacity to go in there and mix with his 245 pounds, you're going to get a lump out of it. Well, here's the play action now. You watch the contact on the ball by Klein. <laughs> He's a little strong, but I, I, you know, I don't know how you can get hurt on that play because I didn't see where he fell on it. It was just where Klein just boxed him off with his left arm so he wouldn't get the offensive rebound, which is what you teach. Klein does two things very, very well for the United States. Offensively, he sets very, very aggressive screens. Defensively, he takes up a lot of room and is not afraid to bang on those boards. Maybe Aver has a flair for the dramatic. Kind of interesting, too, when Uruguay played its first game, they had white uniforms and they had yellow numerals sewn on them. I, I presume they were sewn on. Maybe they were painted on because by the end of 10 minutes, as everybody got wet with perspiration, the numbers literally faded away and ran. The paint ran down through the trousers and onto the legs and onto the floor. So the next day, they show up with light blue uniforms that had been donated by somebody, and today they've got white uniforms so they look pretty spiffy, but they're in trouble at halftime as the United States leads Uruguay 58 to 37, and the big crowd of the forum is enjoying it. Is this the kind of half of basketball you expected, Dicker Phelps? 
Well, what Uruguay did early in the half, they set the tone defensively with the fouls. That's how they played their defense. They committed a lot of fouls. But the United States was just a patient. I just like the way Patrick Ewing got into this game today. And this is what the United States needs. And I think he's adjusting to the United States style, which Coach Knight has put in, the aggressive defense. And from that standpoint, Keith, when Ewing blocks a couple, they start rebounding, they get the transition game going, and this is why they've got the big game. These are hard.
mía, uno, 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 uno,
Morgan Lowe.
Orlando Díaz. 